Hello everyone and welcome to this Vector Ink tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing off various tips and tricks while using Vector Ink. So without further ado, let's dive right into the first tip and that is copy and paste. So if you open up the sidebar menu, you'll notice there is a copy and a paste option here hidden in the sidebar menu. And the reason for that is because this copy and paste feature goes beyond the scope of the project that you're in. For example, if I use the draw tool, I'm going to just lay something random on the canvas. And then I'm going to use the selection tool to select it. I'm going to open up the sidebar menu and tap copy. Now, if I open up the sidebar menu again and tap paste, that object will be pasted onto this canvas as expected, right? Equivalent to what this duplicate here does. But if I exit the canvas and I open up a new project and I hit open up the sidebar menu and hit paste, it's going to bring that object here into this project. So this copy and paste feature is very convenient for wanting to transfer objects from one project to another. So that was the first tip. Second tip, using the path builder tool with this single object selected. So I'll demonstrate what that can do. I'm going to throw a circle here on the canvas, select the draw tool and just draw like some wave line across the circle. Now, Generally, when you're using the path builder tool, you want to select everything and then cut this part and then this part in order to get this shape, right? And that works. But there will be times where you don't want to select everything. You just want to select this one object and then cut out what you want and then have it replace this object. And you can do that using the path builder tool. So if you have one object selected and you activate the path builder tool, it's going to find all of the objects that intersect with that object or overlap the object or close to the object and bring them into the path building mechanism so you can start building your path. Then when you activate another tool, right, when you deactivate the path builder tool, it's going to replace only the object that was selected with the new shape. So that is tip number two. Tip number three, using the copy tool in conjunction with the path builder tool. This is very handy for wanting to create cool patterns with ease. And I'll demonstrate that for you right now. So I threw a circle here on the canvas and I'm going to activate the copy tool. And then I'm going to create a cool little pattern like this here. Okay. Now, now that I have what I want, if I go back to the selection tool, it's going to have everything selected for me. So from here, I can go straight to the path builder tool and start cutting out this cool pattern like so. And the copy tool comes with a lot of options for, for creating a lot of different cool patterns. So that in conjunction with the path builder tool, your possibilities are limitless, right? I created this neat looking pattern with very little effort really quickly. So this is a way that you can create cool patterns using the copy tool along with the path builder tool. So that was tip number three. Tip number four is the virtual stylus. And that is this button right here. So I went into the draw tool and the virtual stylus is this little stylus icon. You're going to see this in the draw tool. You'll see this with the path builder tool. You'll see this with the pen tool. This virtual stylus option comes in handy if you are using a touch screen device and don't have a physical stylus handy. And the reason for creating this is if you're trying to draw with your finger, you're liable to mess up right so if you're trying to draw something with your finger and you're it's hard to see around your finger to bring the to know where to bring the end of the path to the start right a lot of times your finger will get in the way and you have to lift your finger and then do some adjustments well with the virtual stylus you don't need to do that anymore you can actually see where you're drawing 
using the virtual stylus. Um, and this is also very useful for if you're using um, the path builder tool and you have a lot of, you know, a lot of objects involved in the path building mechanism and you're trying to get in between some tight spaces without running into other spaces, this virtual stylus comes in handy for that. As you can see, I'm able to basically cut out what I want without making any mistakes when I'm using this virtual stylus. It makes it a lot easier to cut paths this way. So that's another uh, useful way for using that virtual stylus. So that's tip number four, the virtual stylus. Tip number five is the eyedropper. So I've gotten various um, feedback and questions on how to add custom colors to the color palette. So for instance, say you're, you're messing with the color wheel and you find the color that you want, right? And now you like the color that you want, but you also want to put this color into your color palette up here. Well, you can do so by using the eyedropper tool in the color palette window. And I'll show you. So I'm going to open up the color palette window and I want to add that I want to add that color to my color palette so I can press this plus button then I'm going to select the new color that was generated and then I'm going to activate the eyedropper here and then I'm going to select my color and that color has just been added to my color palette so that's how you can use the eyedropper in the color palette window and just the same you can use it here in the canvas Right, let's say we have another color and I want this object to be this color. I can use this eyedropper, whoops, undo. I can use this eyedropper to do so. So that was tip number five. Tip number six. This is going to be centered around gradients and the things that, the shortcuts that Vector Ink offers with gradients. So let's say, for instance, I want to add gradients to these two objects here. I can select them both and I'm going to tap on this gradient option. And what that did is it took the color of each object and made the other side of the gradient just a darker color of the object. So that's a quick way to get a smooth transitioning gradient um, just by tapping on this gradient option here. You can also add gradient to an object by using the gradient tool. Okay, but that'll just give you a black and white, a default black and white gradient color. So if you want to maintain the color, you want to use this option over here to add the gradient and then come into the gradient tool and make your adjustments. Okay, another thing, and this will be tip number seven another thing is you can move a gradient stop to the beginning or the all the way beginning or all the way end of the gradient bar to add that color to the top and it removes so it replaces the end cap so i'll do that again say i have orange down here blue down here and then i want to have i have green here but I want that I now want that green to be at the top and I want it to be the new end cap up here. I can drag it all the way to the top. It'll delete the blue and now the green is up top. So that was tip number seven. So tip number eight, the selection tool handles. A lot of people may not realize this, but you can you can alter the selection tool handles so that way you can scale evenly on all dimensions simply by tapping this top right handle. Um, so when you have all the handles visible, it's in stretch mode, right? You're stretching the object vertically and horizontally, but if you tap it, it produces the same results as you would if you were holding down the shift key or you tap on this constraint option here. Okay, it allows you to scale, evenly scale. 
So that was tip number eight. Tip number nine, subtraction mode for the path builder tool. So let's lay down some shapes. Okay, and then I'm going to activate the, I'm going to select everything and activate the path builder tool. Now, what you can do with the path builder tool is use this subtraction mode to subtract a shape out of your resulting shape. So I'll demonstrate that. So let's say I'm going to select all of this and I want to use, I want to cut a hole into this shape. I can do so using this subtract shapes button. And what this will do is the results will be pink, uh, letting you know that this is not the same shape See, I don't want that. Let's get rid of that. And you know what? I'll use the um, stylus to help. There we go. So it's going to cut out that shape from this shape. So it basically does this operation, this Boolean subtract on the resulting shape with the subtracted shape. So that is tip number nine subtracting a shape using the path builder tool and lastly tip number 10 if you are familiar with the shape builder tool offered in adobe illustrator um and you're more used to that the results produced by that then you can use you can get that similar result using the path builder tools cutout option so let's activate this i'm going to cut something out randomly right let's take that and let's take that and that's enough and then i'm going to open up the path builder tool control panel change results to cutout and that's going to produce the same results as you would expect from illustrator's shape builder tool by keeping everything on the canvas and only cutting out your results from everything, right? So it leaves you with a bunch of distorted artifacts like the Shape Builder tool would. Um, and, and gives you your resulting shapes as expected. So, and that is it. That is the 10 tips that could help improve your productivity in Vector Inc. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates and tutorials for Vector Inc. I will see you later.